Additive synthesis. Sound waves are added together to make a new and more exciting sound. In my opinion, there are two distinct applications of this method. The first is so simple that the earliest examples of it come from before synthesizers were even invented. The pipe organ pumps pressurized air through hundreds of pipes separated into groups based on their size and material. The player controls which groups are active using something called stops. The second application is based on a very interesting idea that will continue to show up throughout this video. All of the sounds on our dear planet can be broken down into constituent sine waves. We can see the sine waves that make up the sound of me talking on this image here called a spectrogram. So understanding that all sounds are made up of a bunch of sine waves, it's intuitive that it could be interesting to manipulate those sine waves as a synthesis method. So intuitive, in fact, that I even designed an additive oscillator on a Max MSP synth that I made as a teenager. Nerd. Subtractive synthesis. A rich waveform is subtracted from using a filter. Subtractive synths are set up like this. We start with a sound source, also known as an oscillator. And there are about four or five sounds or waveforms that these oscillators make. Saw, square, triangle, and sine. This oscillator then runs into a filter. Common filter designs include the low pass, high pass, and the band pass. Finally, this signal runs from the filter into an amplifier, which controls the intensity or volume of the sound. So our signal path is this. We have an oscillator going into a filter, going into an amplifier. From there, we can automate parameters of the sound using control signal generators. We could use an envelope generator to modulate the overall intensity of the signal by connecting it to the amplifier. We could also connect a low frequency oscillator to a filter for a fun wah 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 kind of sound. The very first attempts at subtractive synthesis began with the military. The machine uses only two sounds produced electrically. One of these represents the breath. The other, the vibration of the vocal cords. The voter was a speech synthesizer invented in 1937. Who saw you? She saw me. Whom did she see? She saw me. For a detailed breakdown of subtractive synthesis, check out this video. I am looking for like three or four people. Maybe one of them is you. The people I'm looking for make music on the computer and want to get better at it faster. Maybe you want to get really good at turning a single idea into a finished song. Maybe you want to get good at making engaging arrangements. Maybe you want to get really good at sound design or synthesizer programming. Whatever it is, I think you should check out Sarah School. At Sarah School, I teach weekly one-on-one -on -one sliding scale music production and composition lessons over Zoom. Basically, the way it works is we have a meeting, you show me something that you've been working on lately, and we use that as a jumping off point to work on the skills that you want to develop. That way, the information that you get is specifically tailored to your music. I've been doing Sarah School for about four years now, and it's really working for some people. Sarah School has helped me crystallize years of scattered progress into real understanding. It has fundamentally changed how I think about composition. If you think that might be you, you can sign up for a lesson or a free 30-minute consultation at sarah-feldman.com slash sarahschool. And now, back to the video. FM synthesis. We modulate the frequency of one wave with another to create a new and complex sound. FM 
FM synthesis was discovered as a sort of happy accident by John Chowning when he was working with a big computer at Stanford in 1967. Chowning was not clowning. He wanted to make a basic sound with a bit of vibrato. So he started by programming one sine wave oscillating within the frequency range of human hearing. Then he modulated its frequency with a much slower sub audio rate sine wave. He then became curious about what would happen if he increased the rate of the slower sub audio rate sine wave into the audio range. Notice that when the slower wave reaches audio rate, we no longer hear the pitch of the faster wave changing, but we hear its timbre changing. This was an incredible discovery, especially in light of the fact that computer resources were very scarce and they would be for a long time. Modulating the frequency of one sine wave with another can create a fuck ton of partials. Before FM, the only way to create a signal of this complexity would be to have a dedicated oscillator for each of those partials. And with the computation power available at the time, that would have been completely out of the question. FM synthesis is simple, musical, and efficient, all qualities necessary for a synthesis method to become extremely popular. If you want a video on the nitty gritty of FM synthesis, including things like sidebands, uh, comment below. Wave table synthesis. A small sample of audio is read back very quickly to create a complex waveform. You can hear wavetable synthesis in almost every single piece of electronic music being made today, and it is the core technology behind the most powerful and popular synths. Wavetable is only possible using digital audio technology and can really only be conceived of in a world where digital audio technology exists. In the 60s and 70s, before Wavetable, we used analog circuits as our sound source for our synthesizers. And those circuits were really good at making a few waveforms like triangle, square, and saw. But now with digital synthesizers, we use a digital representation of a sound as our sound source, which means that we can effectively draw any type of waveform we imagine. What's more is we can draw an even longer waveform and then only read back a portion of that waveform, but then move the portion that we're reading back to change the sound over time. That's amazing. For the full story of wavetable synthesis, starting at the invention of tube oscillators in the 1800s, you can check out this video. Granular synthesis, a catch-all term for any type of sound processing that involves tiny little chunks. <laughs> Now, crucially, these chunks must be within the range of one to 100 milliseconds. You might be thinking, well, arguably a partial or like a sine wave, an additive synthesizer could be a chunk, but no, the chunk has to be in the sub audio rate frequency range. We're talking about a chunk that you can hear as an individual little tiny sound. Most people don't know this, so you can impress your friends with your secret knowledge. But time stretching is actually a form of granular synthesis. For now, let's start with a more typical example. We have control of the size of the grain, the density of the grains, and the shape of the grains. The idea is to make a distribution of many grains, some of which may overlap 
to create a complex texture. If the inspiration for additive, subtractive, wavetable, or FM synthesis is vaguely to recreate the sound of an acoustic instrument, we can think of granular synthesis as being inspired by sounds like walking on a gravel road or the sound of thousands of little water droplets hitting the surface of a lake when there's a wave. In order to reach that level of complexity, we can add randomness to the signal uh. so that it can change over time. Oh yeah, and now that you understand how granular synthesis works, maybe we can try to understand time stretching. Can you guess how it works? If you guessed breaking down a sound into a bunch of chunks and then refitting them back together at the desired new length of sound, then you were correct. Physical modeling synthesis. Mathematical model of an acoustic instrument is used as a sound source. The basic setup works exactly like an acoustic instrument. The exciter, say a guitar pick, sets a resonator, say a guitar string, into motion. In physical modeling synthesis, you have a mathematical model that represents the exciter and a mathematical model that represents the resonator. It's fun because you can create instruments that would never exist in real life, like a tube that gets larger when you hit it. To synthesize, we change the parameters until it sounds cool. Modular synthesis, any type of synthesis where the user creates the signal path. There are a variety of signal generating and processing components, aka modules, connected together using patch cables. The very first analog synths in the 1960s were modular. And now in newfangled contemporary modern day times, a new much smaller format of modular synth called Eurorack has gained extreme popularity amongst a subset of nerds. The modules in the original modular synths typically had one very straightforward function, like a single oscillator, filter, or envelope generator. These synths were sold as a complete system and were not cross-compatible. Now, Eurorack is a standard format that all kinds of manufacturers make modules for. Given the increased competition, companies tend to make advanced modules with many integrated functions. Compare this Moog oscillator that had four wave shapes to a mutable instrument's braids with physical models, wavetables, digital and analog waveforms, two timbre controls, and built-in frequency modulation. Other. Sample. Synthesizers that use samples as their source material. Is this even a type of synthesizer? Probably. Romplers. Sample-based synths that only use samples installed by the manufacturer. Vector synthesis. Crossfading between multiple sound sources. The idea here is that a lot of acoustic sounds have a little burst of noise right at the beginning of the sound. Subtractive synthesis and most other forms of synthesis don't do this. So if we crossfade through a couple of different sounds, then we can create some really interesting complexity and include those funky little transients that our brains love so much. Phase modulation, very similar to FM, but working on principles of phase instead of frequency. Speech synthesis. This one is self-explanatory. FFT synthesis. Basically, a sound is analyzed for its constituent sine waves, and then those sine waves can be individually manipulated to create a new sound. Resynthesis. Analyzes sounds and re constructs it. Yeah.